don't be shocked when your history book and all your friends mention him. Now place your bets as to who that benefits. The very seat of government where Hamilton sits. Not true. Oh, if the shoe fits, wear it. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Hamilton songs. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we listened to the cast recording for the billionth time, and ranked our choices on a mix of fan favorites and their importance to the overall Hamill narrative. If you don't agree with our ranking, you'd have had to be in the room where it happened to make your case. Get your education. Number 10, Alexander Hamilton. And the world's gonna know your name. What's your name? Alexander Hamilton. The musical's opening number, named for the eponymous Treasury Secretary, was introduced to the world back in 2009 when Lin Manuel Miranda performed it at the White House Poetry Jam. There would have been nothing left to do for someone less astute. He would have been dead to destitute without a cent to restitution. Inspired by a biography on the American figurehead, Miranda started a concept album about someone he thought embodied hip hop. But it became a full fledged musical. This track traces the tragic events during Hamilton's upbringing in the Caribbean, then his migration to New York. This song serves to introduce the show's colorful cast of characters, Hamilton's tireless ambition, and Mr. Aaron Burr. And me, I'm the damn fool that shot him. Besides being a fantastic prelude to Miranda's opus, history teachers are using it to engage students with the $10 founding father without a father. And what's your name, Alexander Hamilton? Be back. Number nine, you'll be back. You remember you belong to me. While any of King George the Third songs are awesome, wow, this is the one we had to go with. When you're gone, I'll go mad. On the cast album, Jonathan Groff of Glee and Frozen fame sings this hilariously dark overseas dispatch from the British royalty. Its lyrics, at first anyway, make it sound like a lighthearted breakup anthem from the British Empire to its loyal subjects. But the king soon inserts a threat. I will kill your friends and family. This song perfectly displays Lin Manuel Miranda's wit and eclectic musical background. Though Hamilton is largely inspired by R&B and hip hop, You'll Be Back was modeled after British invasion pop. Excuse us while we sing da 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 forever. Number 8, The Election of 1800. Every action has its equal opposite reaction. John In the context of Act 2, The Election of 1800 restarts the upbeat tempo numbers, coming after heart-wrenching songs like Stay Alive Reprise and It's Quiet Uptown. Aaron Burr and Thomas Jefferson are going head-to-head, -head, as each vies to become the presidential candidate for the Democratic-Republican Party. It becomes increasingly clear that the person with the power to tip the election's outcome is Alexander Hamilton. Go! The country is facing a difficult choice. This multi-layered track puts the ensemble to great use and marks the pivotal moment where Burr starts to resent Hamilton as he actively stops him from advancing his political career. If you were to ask me who I promote, Jefferson has my vote. I'm stepping down. I'm not number seven. One last time. Sorry, what? One last time. George Washington, the first United States president, seeks Hamilton's assistance in crafting his now famous farewell address. Let's take a break tonight and then we'll teach him how to say goodbye. This song serves to illustrate an important moment in American history, when the country had to become accustomed to different people holding the powerful position of president. Miranda used the actual text of Washington's statement having Washington sing the words as Hamilton speaks them alongside him. I anticipate with pleasing expectation that retreat in which I promised myself to realize the sweet enjoyment of partaking. This is a powerful song, and it's hard not to get choked up at Christopher Jackson, the original Washington's vocals. So It's a soft farewell for a character that had come in with such a bang in Right Hand Man. What? And his right hand man. Ooh. Number six, ah, the room where it happens. 
Two Virginians and an immigrant walk into a room diametrically opposed foes. Bouncing between hip hop, Broadway big band, vaudeville comedy, and new wave sounds, this piece de resistance is arguably the most textured song in Hamilton. The seemingly mismatched musical genres and instruments come together to illustrate an equally convoluted story. The dinner table bargain known as the Compromise of 1790. No one else was in the room where it happened, the room where it happened, the room where it happened. No one actually knows what happened behind those closed doors. So Miranda had creative freedom to tell this story as he saw fit. Interestingly, he wrote the song from the perspective of someone who specifically wasn't there, Aaron Burr. I, I wanna be in the room where it happens, the room where it happens. This song at once details Hamilton, Jefferson and Madison's deal to exchange the nation's capital for paying state debts, and also shows Burr as he starts losing his cautious demeanor. Helpless. I'm about to change your life. Then by all means, lead the way. This romantic ditty drew inspiration from all corners of the R&B world. Lyrics like That Boy Is Mine call back to the 1998 Brandy and Monica hit. And according to musical director Alex Lacamoire, the refrain of stressin' blessin' is a nod to Beyonce. Two weeks later in the living room stressin', my father stone-faced while you're asking for his blessing. Miranda's growly singing as Hamilton is a reference to Ja Rule, who actually performed a rendition of this song with Ashanti on the Hamilton mixtape. As long as I'm alive and shiny, swear to God you never feel so. In terms of subject matter, Helpless condenses the details of Eliza Schuyler and Alexander Hamilton's courtship. From Eliza's sister Angelica introducing them, to Hamilton asking Eliza's father for her hand, and finishing with their marriage, this is a song about happy young love. Number four, wait for it. You're the one thing in life I can control. Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Even though the musical is called Hamilton, the audience oftentimes sympathizes with Aaron Burr, the supposed villain in the story. Wait For It expresses Burr's yearning for love and fulfillment, and how he watches from the sidelines as Hamilton succeeds and rises in the ranks. Hamilton doesn't hesitate. He exhibits no restraint. This song perfectly exemplifies how overly cautious Burr is throughout the narrative, all too aware of how much he's lost and how much he wants. Hamilton, in similar circumstances, consistently and recklessly charges forward. Life doesn't discriminate between the sinners and the Lin-Manuel Miranda considers Wait For It among the best songs he's ever written, and Leslie Odom Jr., the original Burr, knocks it out of the park with a spine-tingling performance. Wait for it. Number 3, The Schuyler Sisters. There's nothing rich folks love more than going downtown and slumming it with the poor. This energetic nod to Destiny's Child introduces the audience to the three formidable Schuyler Sisters. In the context both of the musical and the time period in which it takes place, the events have been largely dominated by men. But here we see women with sharp minds and revolutionary ideas. Not the least of which eldest sister Angelica, teeming with wordplay like You want a revolution, I want a revelation! And badass lines such as And when I meet Thomas Jefferson, I'm gonna compel him to include women in the sequel! Work. The song is an anthem for ladies everywhere. <clears throat> <laughs> Number two, Yorktown, the world turned upside down. The Battle of Yorktown. Miranda proves again that you can get supremely pumped while getting a history lesson. The Battle of Yorktown resulted in the American and French armies beating the British and virtually ending the Revolutionary War. Immigrants, we get the job done. During the song, the audience sees Hamilton in the heat of battle, grappling with the prospect of combat, but also wanting to make it home to his wife and unborn son. Miranda soon weaves in a reference to an innovative tactic the historical Alexander Hamilton devised to sneak up on the British. We also see what his compatriots John Lawrence, Marquis de Lafayette, and Hercules Mulligan did towards the war effort though in a considerably epic fashion. Hercules Mulligan, I need no introduction when you knock me down, I get the f*** back up again. Ah! 
this song is high action and high stakes, and leaves you feeling just about ready to rush out into battle. We won! We won! We won! Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. You see it right. Come of age with our young nation. We'll bleed and fight for you. We'll make it right for you. Okay. One more thing. Why do you assume you're the smartest in the room? Why do you assume you're the smartest in the room? I am not throwing away my shot. Number one, my shot. I am not throwing away my shot. I am not throwing away my shot. Hey, you will just suck my country. I'm not scrappy and hungry and I'm not throwing away my Having one song capture the entire ethos of a show is a tall order, which is probably why My Shot took Miranda a year to write. My Shot is the moment Hamilton impresses his new friends, Lawrence, Lafayette, Mulligan, and Burr, who he'd met in the previous song, Aaron Burser. The revolution's imminent, what do you stall for? If you stand for nothing, Burr, what'll you fall for? The clever lyrics and phrasing immediately set the character of Hamilton apart, but Miranda's genius also shines through. The song's title means many things at once. The glasses of alcohol the men are sharing, a chance at achieving one's dreams, and the bullet that ended Hamilton's life. Really, it's the masterfully articulated theme of the musical, leaving the audience with no choice but to rise up. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo and subscribe for new videos every day. A bunch of revolutionary man, you mission abolitionists. Give me a position, show me where the ammunition is.